Um, so what got you into your artistic talent? Well, um, I guess me and my brother used to draw all the time, making little comic books and stuff like that. Um, we had a lot of time on our hands. Uh, mother always worked. And it was just something we did, something we did for fun. And I never really had any validation until it was much later in life. Uh, when other people started noticing, uh, you know, what I could do. My style is more like uh, sort of comic book-like, cartoonish, but I like figure drawings. I, I love uh, the human figure. And for some reason, uh, I like doing nudes, uh, not erotica, but just nudes, you know, tasteful. Um, and uh, when I came to jail, I found myself with even more time on my hands. But separated from my brother, I started practicing on my own, doing my own thing, uh, sort of developing, learning how to do eyes, learning how to, you know, do proportions and make the humans look more realistic than I did before. Um, uh, bettering my hand with hair and little fibers like that. Uh, I still couldn't master clothes, so I stuck with the nudes. Uh, I've tried my hand at portraits, and I'm okay. Uh, I've never really sold anything. Um, my ex-girlfriend bought my first piece, I guess, which made me... Uh, by definition, a professional, although it was never published. Uh, but then I enrolled in college courses. Um, the professors came to the prison last summer and started teaching, and I was enrolled in Yale. And I took an art class. I already knew what to do, but it still... Um, brought me out of my comfort zone because uh, uh, the teacher, Alex, and another teacher, Grant, uh, both uh, introduced me to tone and perspective and grayscale and shading and things that I uh, never really uh, had learned anywhere. And here I was getting, you know, hands-on training for the first time. Uh, with graphite and charcoal and willow. And um, now I'm enrolled in my second course with uh, Grant Chewy. He's the uh, instructor. And I'm in uh, drawing two uh, right now. Uh, sort of cutting my teeth all over again uh, as a student. Uh, learning that uh, there's a lot more than uh, one can uh, display on their own from just mindless doodling and sketching. And I fill books, I draw pictures, I uh, I mess with ink, I mess with pencil, and uh, I come to find if I have uh, a talent or not. Do I have skill? Do I have talent? That's the big thing. And, um, it's just never stops developing. Do you think that you have, like, perfected uh, the style of art you wanted to achieve? I think that if you line up my art, uh, all of my figures look related somehow, like it's a genealogy thing. <laughs> I can draw a face and it can look related to the other faces that I've drawn. Uh, I, I guess it's just a signature that I've developed. Um, I don't think I've perfected my craft yet. I think I'm still finding my my way into better and better and more realistic. And um, like recently, I started messing with you know fine things like eyelashes or you know, head hair, and I've, every year I learn a new way to draw the ear, 
it's stupid, but it's uh, it's true. Um, hands, I'm still learning about fingers and fingernails. Do I do fingernails? Do I leave them out? Um, and that's what sets me apart from maybe realism as opposed to sort of fantasy and abstract and uh, the artwork in the field of uh, um, graphic novels is what I'm probably more uh, comfortable drawing as opposed to, you know, sit your daughter down and let me draw her portrait for all time. Um, I'm not sure I'm, how I would do because I draw a lot from my imagination as opposed to drawing from a real photograph. Um, all my characters come from my mindscape where my imagination sort of thrives and lives and grows and develops and works. It's a wild west up there, but uh, it's my world, and uh, I can invent people. I have no children. Yet I have created hundreds of people, and um, yeah, so I'm nowhere near done developing or reaching perfection. Um, my kitchen right now is uh, putting me in uncomfortable places where uh, I'm doing contours and blind contours where you you don't look down at the paper, you just look ahead and draw what you see. You do the outline and don't worry about it. There's no such thing as a mistake. Um, and nothing is precious. So don't don't worry about what's on the paper because it's just, you know, pencil and paper and um, nothing is a masterpiece. Yeah. Um, do you think without, like, you know, the situation you're in now, you know, where you went to prison and everything, and you said you already had been doing artwork before that since you were little. Do you think you would have continued, you know, with, if you, say, you know, didn't go in the situation you're in and didn't say, I know a lot of people, they seem to have like a love for, you know, art. And then it seems like once they become an, an adult, if it's not something that's making them money, they just kind of, you know what I mean? Like go away from it. And never really seem to find the time to do it anymore, even if it was something they love as a, you know, a child or a teenager. Do you think you would have, uh, you know, stayed with it? I think that um, I would have always drawn in the moment, uh, meaning someone challenges me or someone says let's go get a tattoo. And it's like, well, if I'm going to get a tattoo, I'm going to design my tattoo. And I would have put my art on my own body. But it's true. I probably would not have any sketchbooks. I wouldn't have a studio in the house. Um, I might get into graphic design uh, if I had been introduced to computers, which I never have. I've never, I've never been on the internet. I'm, I'm looking to open up maybe a Facebook page in the future. Um, to maybe display some of my things. But um, had I never come to prison, I guess I would have stopped drawing and done it for fun. Uh, maybe done it with my nephew or my niece and shown them what I can do and challenged them to show me what their heads uh, have to say to uh, um, when it, you, know, you put a a pencil in a child's hand and you see um, what they can do. Can they really draw a bird? Can they draw a face? Uh, do they get it right or is it just stick people? Yeah, I never really got like, I used to draw a lot when I was younger, but I don't really draw that much anymore. I will here and there and that's about it. I don't like my mom. She was a good artist, but she only done it when she was in the mood. I might have seen her draw see she drew a character from resident evil uh the rock and i think one other person i think is all i've ever seen her draw and that's you know i'm 33 years old and my brother he used to draw quite a bit and i don't remember him really drawing that much anymore i think my sister is the only one that really kept up with you know her uh creative ability and art and, 
Yeah, my sister is a really good artist. I had a very creative mother, but she would show it in ways of decorating and uh, maybe her own fashion. But I never saw her really put pen to paper. Uh, the same can be said for my father, who's very creative. However, it doesn't come out with artwork. Uh, it comes out in his craft. He does cheap rock, mm-hmm. and uh, he's like a master at what he does. Uh, smooth and flawless and perfection. But um, me, it was my brother. I looked up to my brother and I saw him as uh, my teacher. Uh, he was three years older than me. And two years older than me, but two and a half years. He was about three years. Um, and comic books. I loved comic books growing up. Superman was my hero. He loved Batman, and we just collected and collected all the books. I loved the old DC comics, like Tales from the Crypt and Weird Science, because it would show the macabre side of what you can do. And uh, there was another magazine in the 80s. It's probably still around, but I've been locked up for about 25 years. So I don't know if heavy metal is still out there, but it was some really cool um, fantasy art that would take, you know, the human figure and mess with it with aliens and all kinds of, um, you know, robotics and androids. And uh, it was just really cool. So I know you mentioned about, like, wanting to, like, do a Facebook page. And, like, it, like, what is the future, you think, for your artwork? And, like, where are you wanting to see it go? Um, as much as I love to write, and I want to be published one day for my fiction. Um, I'd love to actually be an artist and put some work out there that sells again and again. Uh, I love that my ex bought my first piece and made me someone in her eyes. And it made me sort of validated to say, someone wants to hang up my art. But um, what? It's going to happen if I create a portfolio and put it out there. Is there an audience for it? Does someone want to spend five bucks, ten bucks, twenty bucks on a piece of my imagination? Um, I don't have a legacy of children, and I did something pretty horrible to get me thrown in prison. So there's an infamy behind that. But what I want is a legacy. I want to leave my mark in the creative things that I can do, and that would be to sell my art. If it doesn't sell, you have one maybe I can Maybe I can give my art away one day, but Facebook, I think, is probably the way I'm going to go before, you know, maybe springtime I'll get out there and, and do it. Mm-hmm. That's a very good chance, because I know a lot of people like collect art and stuff, so it's a very good possibility. You know, to be able to get out there just trying to find your, I guess in a way, your people, you know, in your a sense. community of people that want to buy. Yeah, my problem is, is that I focus too much on the nudes. And while it's not erotica, Facebook would probably frown upon it. So I'd have a really hard time advertising who I am, even if I had a Facebook page. True. It's still doable. Yeah, you'd have to. There's, there's a way it's around it. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's the only way to really do the, uh, well, the nudity would have to be kind of blocking out the, I guess, the sexual parts in it. Well, that's what I was thinking, just maybe censor it to post it, but then say if you're interested, I can send you the actual uncensored on the messenger. It's weird, though, because, yeah. like, um, like, you know, the whole true crime thing, like, there's people that I'm friends with, they will, like, get banned from Facebook for, like, posts from, like, you know, years ago, like they could share like a Jeffrey Dahmer meme and get banned and I could share the same meme at some point and have not got banned. So it's really weird how things like that work. Like you could probably post things all day and not get banned. And, you know, one little thing might, you know, throw a red flag up and you'll get banned. But yeah, there's ways around it though, for sure. Well, I, I suppose that if I, um, like what Olivia said, if you could put like a black bar or an emoji or something and and it could be known that if someone was interested in seeing the uncensored work, then they could certainly uh, have it Um, because it's just digitally cleaned up for the internet. 
Um, but I, I live with a, a guy, Chris, who is one of the best artists that I've met in a long time. And I've been locked down since the 90s. And uh, he puts his work out there. And I look up to him because he has this developed following, uh, Chris Peltier. And uh, I think that I can maybe be that something one day that someone um, looks for the next piece that I could do. I don't want to be successful because I'm a prisoner or because I have killed someone and someone wants to own something from my head. I'd rather have someone know me anonymously, um, and I've tried that, and it doesn't work. No one, no bites. It's like fishing, and I sat in the boat all day, but the all day was probably more like a year, and there were no bites. Um, and I'm afraid that I have to step out of these shadows and say, um, I'll introduce myself. You know, my name, I was born Todd Rizzo, but years ago I changed my name to Joseph. And um, I'm sure that if someone wanted to get in contact with me before I set up a Facebook page, they can certainly contact you, Bruce, or you, Olivia. And, and and find a way to get in touch. But um, in the meantime, I draw for fun. I draw for myself. I fill up sketchbooks. I sit in my cell and I draw. I draw during class. And I open myself up to critiques from the other students who everyone I meet, I think, is better than me. So it's really when someone else sees your art uh, are you validated? And only then do you realize that you have a talent, not just a skill that somebody taught you, because I believe I was born this way. Yeah, like we were saying, it's kind of hard because there's um, a lady I have talked to for 10 years. You know, she's in prison for murder, and uh, she's she's artistic as well. And I've noticed... She used to do like a lot more stuff and kind of go with the murder billia, you know, community. And uh, probably four or five years ago, roughly, give or take, she had said, you know, she wanted to step away from that because that was like the only reason that people were reaching out to her. She didn't want to be known for that. And that was the reason people were buying her artwork or, you know, something from her because she was actually doing some. Uh, weird well it wasn't really weird i guess in a, in a sense it was but her uh private part she was painting it and then setting down on paper and selling that <laughs> so uh when you well well uh well i would never try that <laughs> medium uh i do love the expression of nudity in art uh, again, I don't do like arousal or erotica uh, or sexual situations. I just simply strip off the clothes and put somebody in a situation that uh, can seem very natural. Uh, they just happen to be naked. I'm not a nudist, but uh, I am Wiccan, and I do believe that, uh, you know, it's okay to be nude. It's okay to walk around topless if you're a woman, if you're a man, too. If you're, um, if you're confident in your own body, then own it. And I don't just draw, like, beautiful people. I, I will draw people of all shapes. And uh, if they're a little furry, then I'll do that, too. Uh, I like deformities, too. I love to draw, like, people who are maybe part creature, maybe are missing a limb, um, just something bizarre, maybe something supernatural. Uh, I just love the different, I love the weird, and more than anything, I would just love for someone to want me to draw for them. Yeah, you're, um, the ones where you mix it up and it's like, um, 
like how you said, like the creatures and stuff. Those are my favorite pieces of yours. And um, I know nude art isn't for everyone, but like you said, I think it's kind of natural in the way that you do it. It's not like perverted. It's just, uh, it's just nude people doing stuff and nude creatures, you know, living life. And I think that's really good. And I think there's a community out there for it that would like to see it. So. Oh, oh, yeah, there's that's a community. Think, yeah, I think it's, um, I don't know, America could have looked a lot different if um, religion wasn't brought in to control the law a long time ago. We might be one of those nations that has nudity in our commercials or shampoo or something like that, underwear, where, you know, it's... it's Today, we, we hide everything, and um, there's a lot of censorship in, of course, protecting children um, and making it a parent's choice to decide if their child is exposed to something like that. But we do have civilized countries like France and Italy that do have nudity on their televisions uh, as if it's very, you know, natural, and it is. And uh, America really could have been a different place if um, religion didn't come in and influence the uh, lawmakers. Yeah, that's very, very good point. I knew with um, kind of nowadays, like some of the younger generation, probably what your generation, they kind of dress more. <laughs> my generation you know more revealing which usually they get made fun of a lot which you know i don't agree with but i know like going back to art though um i know you know you have done the cover for uh one of my book projects i'm working on which i'm putting your name in it you know as the uh, artist behind it so hopefully that will help you out in that sense um trying to think um i know you've you know drew us quite a bit of stuff since we've been uh, it's been what two years now since I, I know since I've least been talking to you. Right, uh, uh, I was sort of transitioning from death row to population when we met, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, never ever shared as much art as I do now. When I really find somebody that has a true appetite for for the weird. Or for art, and I know that uh, you, you both definitely uh, have that case bud on your tongues. Uh, I love to provide, uh, so I'll keep churning it out. I don't mind if you share what I've created uh, with your audience, but um, uh, yeah, you just you can't stop me from drawing. Yeah, like I really enjoy your artwork and I like seeing, you know, what you send us and stuff, especially, you know, the the Bigfoot ones you have done for me and stuff, because our last episode that we had recorded actually was about Bigfoot and <laughs> missing people and about it being a connection there. And I know Olivia usually shows me the artwork you send her, which the one that you really do you want to talk about that one? The one they Wildling. Yeah, they done for you. Yeah, that was a really good one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the yeah what I love is good. that uh, Olivia comes up with ideas uh, and she feeds them mm -hmm. into my sort of brain, my little computer, and I turn around and say, Did you imagine this? Um, so I take, you know, her direction. Um, my ex girlfriends come up with some great ideas that has produced some. Uh, some of my wonderful pieces that I'm pretty proud of, and um, I just want to show it to the world. Uh, even if they don't buy it, if they look at it, then that says something. Um, speaking of that, like, what do you think, out of all the years, what is probably your favorite art piece you've ever done? Uh, I've created these things called grommets. They're these elemental creatures. It's sort of like how um, uh, Cameron has created Avatar and Navi. Uh, he invented a whole sort of uh, mythology of species. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he has their history, their planet, and I've done that. 
And I love to draw grommets. Uh, they have these prehensile tendrils coming out of their head, like uh, sort of a possum's tail. So it, it would appear to be dreadlocks, but they can all move like fingers. Mm-hmm. And they each have uh, a different clan of power from whether it's fire, water, earth, or air. And uh, I, I love sort of connecting it back to the earth uh, with the elements in the universe. And that's, I, I created this, this novel one day and it was missing pictures. So I sat down and said, what does a grommet look like? And so that'll be my first book. So by the end of the year, I hope that I can sort of introduce grommets to the world and show them what they look like and read about them and, you know, sort of meet my friends that I've lived with in my head for uh, probably since 2007. Is that the, um, I'm wanting to say, is that the artwork of all the little creatures? Yeah, I believe so, right? Yeah, they're... Yeah, they're all naked. They don't wear clothes. So <laughs> yeah, I really like everybody. this too. But uh, they're not. They're not. They're not little perverts, and I'm not a pervert. <laughs> um, I just. Uh, I just love drawing uh, the human body. I think it's beautiful. Uh, no matter what your size is, no matter what your gender is, no matter what your sexuality is, I love to draw you. Hell yeah. Uh, I don't think we have too much longer left on the phone call, so is there any of a uh, last message you'd like to leave for this episode? I'd love it if, uh, you know, someone who's listening today uh, stops their busy life and sits down with someone they love and starts drawing, uh, discovers that they have a talent, too. It's not just a skill, it's a talent. We're all born with something. We can do something. You have one minute left. I believe that uh, there's a lot more artists out there than uh, than they know. And if anybody wants to reach me, I'm sure that they can uh, reach out to you, Bruce, or you, Olivia, and, and find me. Oh, yeah. yeah. For sure. Oh, yeah. Well, if anybody reaches out, we'll uh, send them your way. I know I've already sent a couple your way from before, so... Well, thank you for your time. Uh, I enjoy sharing my, I call a gift with uh, your audience. All right, yeah, thank you for calling, and good talking to you, like always. All right, goodbye, Olivia. Goodbye, Bruce. All right, have a good night. Bye.